Good evening. Thank you so much. There's still seats down in front if you want. Um, thank you so much for, for coming here this evening. Uh, this is a really special event for us here at the studio. It's the culmination of a, of a very long and, and wonderful <clears throat> relationship and project um, that's really uh, been, been a project of ours for more than two years. Uh, my name is Golan Levin. I'm professor of art and also um, director of this, the Frank Ratchie Studio for Creative Inquiry. This is the research laboratory of the College of Fine Arts. Uh, where we are dedicated to supporting atypical, anti-disciplinary, and inter-institutional research at the intersection of art, science, technology, and culture. Um, in 2009, with the support of the Center for Computational Thinking and the School of Computer Science, uh, we were given a grant to run a conference called Art and Code. We actually had three conferences called Art and Code, uh, all of which were dedicated in one way or another to programming environments for artists, young people, and the rest of us. Um, and uh, Art and Code 1 uh, introduced people around our community to various arts engineering toolkits like Open Frameworks, Processing, Max MSP, Pure Data. Uh, the uh, Art and Code 2, which was mobile Art and Code, uh, introduced students to programming things on mobile phones. And Art and Code 3 was Art and Code 3D, um, DIY uh, scanning and, and so DIY, DIY 3D sensing and visualization, which was run in late um, 2011 here in the studio. Uh, and it was all about the new possibilities that attended the introduction of the Microsoft Connect sensor, which might seem like sort of a, a gadget-focused way of thinking about things, but it really was a revolutionary device in terms of what it, the new aesthetic possibilities it afforded. It, it pretty much erased 40 years of problems in computer vision almost overnight, and there was a huge efflorescence of creative activity. Even before Microsoft themselves released their own drivers, artists and hackers, some of whom were invited to Art and Code 3, uh, came to figure out how we could make new things with it. And um, I hosted here at the studio a uh, hackathon, if you will, uh, in which about a dozen different artists, designers, and uh, creative technologists from actually all over the world came to collaborate. Um, working here at the time was Jonathan Menard, who graduated in 2007 from the School of Art with BHA in Art and Anthropology. Jonathan was working here as a fellow in the studio with Professor Lowry Burgess doing uh, documentary work basically about Lowry's Moon Arts project that he's been directing for some time. But more generally, Jonathan has become truly a, a documentarian of technology and a documentarian of, of how technology is impacting society. Uh, and one of the folks that we invited to the hackathon was James George, um, uh, who was already uh, an emerging figure um, in the creative technology landscape and the open frameworks uh, hacking and development scene, and who had made some really stunning photographic work with Alexander Porter uh, involving connect scanning people in the New York City subways. Uh, the two of them met here, and I asked, I had asked Jonathan to um, see if he could document the activities just in general. Jonathan said, well, it makes sense to do the documentation uh, with the connect. And the two of them began to work on a documentary project that studied the, the, the folks at the epicenter of the creative technology field, the folks who were um, some of the global leaders in creative arts with code the originators of the processing and open frameworks communities, uh, and a lot of great artists who are making interesting kinds of interactive and new media work today um, in those environments in particular. Uh, what grew out of it was clouds, uh, which uh, may be, uh, well, the world's first, but even if it is, is or isn't, it's, uh, it's an interactive, generative documentary film. Uh, what you're about to see tonight is not uh, a video or a film per se, it's actually an executable um, that draws into 40 hours, or sorry, 40 interviews and some 10 hours of footage uh, of interviews with up to 40 really renowned artists and designers and technologists and thinkers and philosophers, including folks like Bruce Sterling, John Maida, Paola Antonelli, uh, Nervous System, Casey Reese, and many others. Uh, and what you're seeing is actually an executable which is generatively creating on the fly uh, a movie uh, which can be as long or as short as we as we want. Uh, and they'll be up here controlling it uh, interactively with uh, Connect that you might see up here. That's what those two front chairs are here. So they'll be steering you through kind of a tour of the, the clouds environment. Just a couple credits I want to say uh, before I, I hand it over to them to introduce things further. Um, so first of all, uh, the, the four key people behind this are Jonathan Menard, James George, um, their producer, Winslow Porter, and the generative soundtrack, the music itself is also being computed on the fly. 
uh, was by Luc Dubois. There's actually a whole host of code contributed by some 30 other artists, which forms some of the B-roll in the documentary. Some of the visual systems you'll see in the background were contributed by, by friends and, and subjects and interviewees of the documentary. So all the visual stuff you'll see in the background was made by a big community of people to kind of illustrate uh, the ideas that are being talked about in the interviews. Um, so there's many, many people they'll talk about at the end. And I just want to thank some of the main sponsors of, of this. Um, so here, it's, we, we've, it's really been um, cobbled together from many, many generous sources. Um, there was a Kickstarter, and there's thousands of people to thank there. Um, but also, Microsoft Research and Microsoft Interactive Entertainment Business both um, really supported the work substantially, particularly through the School of Computer Science and the um, Center for Computational Thinking. Um, James and Jonathan enjoyed residencies not only here at the studio, but also at the IBM Center for Art and Technology in New York City and at YCAM Labs in, um, in Yamaguchi. In Japan, uh, and I'm missing any other. ITP also has also supported this significantly. And um, IBM. Sorry, and IBM. I said yeah. So um, that said, I think that's that's good. I want to invite Jonathan James maybe to say a word before we begin. Hi everyone, welcome. Um, thank you so much for attending this screening. Um, this is really only the second time we've presented it to a live audience. Um, and as Golan said, we, we met here at the studio for Creative Inquiry and you know, hatched this idea and technology um, in, in these very halls. And um, so a lot of the people uh, featured in the film are our friends, artists who have come through this community. Um, and so I think you'll be familiar with a lot of the work and ideas uh, represented and you're very much an informed audience. Uh, and so you know, from the very beginning, we were exploring these ideas of open source culture, networked creativity, um, these people who are developing their own tools and sharing code. And um, so the focus really of that conversation that we recorded was you know, the, the people's motivation um, for, for sharing their tools. Um, and so we worked with many of the artists featured in the film that you'll see uh, to contribute their code. Um, so what you're seeing, these, these executables that are running are all developed in C++. Um, and many of them were commissioned um, by the artist. Um, so just a little bit of background on how it looks and the way it came about. So in a lot of ways we conducted this like a, a traditional documentary where we researched the community, picked key figures that uh, had an interesting dialogue with one another, and then conducted in-depth interviews with them. Um, but uh, what we've done with Clouds is we can take that the interview and we uh, imagine it as data. So it's 3D scans of the artists and we're able to then visualize them through code. So to support this metaphor that the artists are coexisting with their own creations that they've been commissioned to make and that we've contributed. So it's all sort of in one computational universe within the film. So before we begin, we can just, what you're looking at here uh, is Xcode, um, and here's a window into some of the C++. Um, there's about 80 visual systems um, created by 30 to 40 artists, um, our collaborators. And um, so we're compiling and running you know, in real time um, from this from this code and so everything from uh, the visuals to the story uh, and sequences as well as the music are all all running in real time and algorithmically based and so in, in many ways this is a, a film but it's also a visualization it's a visualization of a community and their ideas um, and the very algorithms um, you know, that, that these artists use so uh, tonight uh, we'll be guiding the uh, guiding the, the film. So we also present Clouds as an installation where, which you can guide. So you can think of this a little bit as a vicarious interaction. So Jonathan and I will be up front um, using our gestures to select questions uh, and you know take the film on a particular path. So you can think of it as a real-time director's cut. Um, but and without further ado, yeah, yeah. thank you. So, thank you so much. I was spending every night writing a system uh, in Python. Um, I just want to learn things. I always put some by myself, like four years behind my grad students. So I was trying to catch up, you know, and so I was making a system. And I wanted to make a system that wasn't just about computation. Um, it was more about um, um, hand gestures, like, like drawings. And so I made a system that would encode my drawings and gestures and colors that I like, and it's poured into a vat. And I worked with that. So those series of um, pieces, there are seven of them. They are, they are on the web, so you can't see them, actually. Um, um, those things were all examples of a different technique I developed to make more human 
uh, view of what computation looks like, feels like. Todas estas estas propiedades que tienen que suelen tener este, las aplicaciones interactivas, ¿no? las, eh, las aplicaciones en general, eh, tienen cualidades eh, expresivas que, que, que a veces que son muy abstractas y como parecen prevenir de, de este universo imaginario. And I think living systems are computational processes in a sense, so they seem exactly the same. <laughs> They have physical rules and they have interactions and we can code those sorts of things. I think the thing that happens with biological systems is that they are extremely ridiculously complicated in a way that we can't model at all right now or understand. There's just so many different things going on being translated and regulated in so many ways with infinite feedback loops and mechanisms. So, yeah, but I think ultimately if you could model it, then you would essentially create life in the computer. I mean, it would be the same thing. It's just a series of things interacting in a certain way. It produces complex behavior. And data as narrative is something that's really interesting. And the idea that, um, you know, when I talk a lot about the, the fact that our lives can be documented through, through data, and they are being documented through data, I think it's really interesting when someone disappears from the internet and then they can be pieced back together by the crowd. Um, I think another really interesting thing recently is this uh, functionality that Google added where when you die, um, they can auto-notify some amount of people that you are dead and that here's the password to your data in case they want to do something with it. Imagine a city run, you know, run um, as an operating system, from the water to the electricity to the healthcare to pension payments to the traffic lights, and is it is it a 51% or, or more publicly owned um, operating system? You know, which which language context was it? I mean, did, does Oracle or Microsoft make operating systems for cities? I mean, we have Windows for warships. I mean, you know, it, it, is, is this okay? Um, are um, what what are the implications of of yourself as um, a mere um, um, generator of, 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 of sensor data? Do you own your route? Do you own your walk through a city? Um, do you own your position? You know, is it your civil responsibility to, to, to become a generator of data such that the city can function um, uh, more readily? Uh, where does that data go? Are there, thanks for watching. Thank you. Are there any questions you would have liked to ask the system that weren't asked or So um, this version is a little bit rigged for the presentation, which is you might have noticed this cycling through the questions. Um, so we had a specific a, a broad set of them and we picked a few of them that we were going to show today. But as an installation, the, the questions that you have are the other options that appear in these in this map. So as, as we were going through, uh, and you might have been seeing this path being traced through space. Um, every, at every clip, there's a multitude of different options we can go to next, and the questions will represent those. So um, this one was changed so that we could guide it to specific subject areas, but in general, you sort of control it, but it's more of like you can deviate based on where the question, what questions are there. So there'll always be different questions based on where you are and what topic you're on. I mean, hope, hopefully in your mind it's triggering reactions. And, um, and yeah, I mean, we would like, ideally, viewers to be able to kind of follow um, some meaningful, coherent path through the story that's individualized and the idea that you're following your curiosity. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the full version, there's a plenitude of questions. I mean, there, there are hundreds. So um, yeah, we, we just have to kind of limit it for, <laughs> to navigate reliably. Um, it, it doesn't have a notion of an end, per se, um, but there's uh, essentially layers that get revealed. So at the beginning, we have more introductory content. That sort of, sort of, we have layers that you, so you start and you see more easy to understand clips, and as you've heard a topic uh, more than a few times, it starts to get into more complex ideas. It's a kind of the...
Yeah. Like really becoming malleable. Um, yeah, currently it's not functioning in any way as a wiki or there's no machine learning. Um, it's it's uh, very much um, a kind of editorial process in which we're going through the interviews and selecting you know, salient clips and then attaching keywords. Although this process of essentially creating a semantic web could be applied to other databases and, and is often. And that's one of our interests in general in this, in this inquiry. It's a new ways of approaching storytelling and documentaries, um, especially working with large databases. So, so this, um, there are about 45 interviews in clouds where they're edited down to about 10 hours of content um, that can be explored. Um, and so the, 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 the algorithms we came up with, this story engine, um, we hope will be applied uh, to other you know, stories and archives. And uh, we're also planning on releasing a version of this that you can explore on your own, and they will have, that version will have a, a mode that allows you to be a little more freeform and selective about the topics you're going into. So this yeah. is sort of a guided mode that has the structure of creating these sequences. It's meant to be more cinematic, but if you're doing it for more research purposes, then we want to expose that, that archive. Yeah, and we have we have backend tools for exploring the content, which we use to help us kind of find the story. Because we conducted all these interviews in a very open-minded way, without um, having a sense of the larger structure, and so then we were able to, to to visualize all those tags and see these clusters and connections. And and often the system will you know create kind of surprising connections that we didn't anticipate, or even find affinities between different people who aren't necessary we wouldn't think of as in conversation or don't know each other, but kind of have these. Um, yeah, shared ideas, so um, it's, it's useful really as a discovery tool as well. Um, yeah, it's interesting because, uh, you, you, I mean, in an interview you always don't get the answer that you expect and the, the conversation evolves. Um, and so uh, it was a reverse engineering process. Um, where uh, we were then, it's a bit like Jeopardy, I mean, we're kind of then asking a question and abstracting that to get to the topic. Um, so so those, all the questions are pretty much rewritten. Um, also because we, we didn't know that we were going to approach it in this way, um, and so we hadn't sort of kept a, a very thorough archive of all the questions that were asked, even though we had the sort of transcripts. Um, so, yeah, if that answers your question. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks.